Okay, and I don't know why this camera is down here. Let me see something. Okay. Now let me make sure that it is public. So um I should have grabbed my other phone. Hold the line, please. Well, let me make sure that I am public on Facebook because I have made that mistake several times. Sorry, y'all, this is my phone I use for work for people to dial in. Um, I'm just going to go on here and make sure that everything is copacetic. Like I said, um, hope y'all, everyone is having a happy new year so far. It's only four days into it, so we'll see how it goes. So, you know, we got to see how it goes, see what's going on, see what's on and popping. Um, oh, just to, um, uh, just to also, oh, I'm public. Okay. All right. So we good to go. Um, okay. First of all, as y'all know, if, if this is y'all first rodeo to the money Mondays, um, welcome. I have two cameras going. I'm live on Facebook and then I'm live on Instagram. Normally I try and keep them, um, kind of together. So all I have to do is look up or down, but um my other stand is not working properly so i had to get a stand that you attach to the desk or whatever just so it would be okay so let me see if i can get this angle right let's turn it this way that might be a little bit better i don't know we're gonna get through this we're gonna get through this all right so first um, I just want to let y'all know, for those who don't know yet, I have a new YouTube channel. So please go over there and subscribe. I'm trying to get my numbers up. My YouTube, YouTube channel is Tanya Gemini. Well, I basically talk about the same things that I talk about on Money Monday. I'm going to try and move all those videos that I've done all last year over to the new YouTube channel. But I also um, do my um, budgeting. I do my cash stuffing my cash envelope stuff and my sinking funds. I'm going to be talking about the new home that um, is getting built uh, this year. Praying that it will be ready in April. <laughs> they moved it from March to April. So praying that it'll be ready in April. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, come check me out. It's a good time over there. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get into the um, financial goals for the new year. Um, I said I wasn't making any resolutions this year, but I do want to set some goals. Goals are very important. If you want to achieve anything in life, the first start to that is setting goals. Um, you have to set goals because you have to have some kind of action plan of how to reach what you're trying to achieve. Like I can say, yeah, I want to save $10,000 this year. That's my, that's my goal. And then behind the goal, you have to create an action plan behind it. So you have to say, well, how do I plan to save that 10000 Like, what am I going to do to save that 10000 So I'm going to start, since I'm already talking about savings. Um, wait a minute. I know, I know somebody had wanted to be on here. I wonder if I can tag him or something. Um, he'll probably catch me. I'm not going to worry about tagging him. I'll tag him after this at this over and done with, but I know he likes to ask questions. So, <laughs> all right. So the first thing we're going to talk about is savings goals. So, um, savings goals could be how much money you want to put in your 401k for retirement, how much money you want to put in your Roth IRA for retirement, um, saving towards, um, a down payment on a house, which I have had done last year, um, saving for, um, even saving for a wedding, saving for a birthday, saving for Christmas, 
um, a lot of those things are in my sinking funds as budgeting for it. But as far as my big savings, um, I do savings challenges, and I'm going to get to that in a minute, tell you what savings challenges I did last year. Um, some of you have watched my videos to show the um, the amount that I saved. And um, yeah, it, it was a couple of cool challenges. I'm doing two of them again, and I'm also doing one extra one. So I will let y'all know about that in a few moments. Um, so just tell me, comment, what, what, savings, what savings goals do you have for this year? Comment and let me know what savings goals do you have for this year? Um, and how do you plan on achieving them? Like I achieve some of my savings goals by doing savings challenges. That's how I achieve my savings goals. I budget it out for what I needed for my savings challenges. So last year I did the 100 cash envelope savings challenge where I took 100 envelopes. I, I should have grabbed some of the envelopes. I, I, I numbered them one through 100. And since I do a pay week budget or paycheck budget or payday budget, whatever you want to call it, um, I get paid by weekly, so I do my budget based on how I get paid. Um, with the 100 cash envelope challenge, you're supposed to select two envelopes at random, so they can be any number, and then you put the cash in those envelopes that matches that number. So say, for instance, if I pulled um, an envelope that had the 50 on it and an envelope that had 100 on it, I'll put $50 in the 50 envelope and $100 in the 100 envelope. Stash that away, continue the next week. Well, since I do a paycheck budget, what I do is I select four envelopes every time I get paid. And I select them at random. And instead of putting money in each envelope, I just total the amount up at, excuse me, thank you. I just total the amount up and I just put them in one of the envelopes, I rubber band it together and then drop it back in my bag. If y'all want to know more information about that, check out my video on youtube that i did for the 100 cash envelope um, challenge and i counted the money and showed you what the total is now by the end of the year you should have 550 dollars but child yeah, messed up on two envelopes i didn't i must not have counted right or thought i had put money in there or whatever so totally i was short 100 dollars. so for that challenge i actually saved four thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars which is still huge, which is still a big deal. I was gonna put that towards my um, my house, but I already have my down payment saved up. The builder is paying the closing costs, so really all I'm doing is budgeting for the new furniture and things like that that I need, and I've already had a good start on that. So what I decided to do, since the government so graciously have put this 0% interest in place for student loans, I put all that towards my student loans, plus some. I put my other challenge that I did towards student loans as well. Um, last year, I did the $5 challenge, which means I just saved my $5 bills. Every time I got change for change back and it included the $5 bill, I just stashed it in a, um, I had a jar for it, stashed them in there. Um, I have a video on that too, showing um, me counting how much I actually had in $5 bills, which came out to be $1,745. I put all that towards student loans. Um, and then I, um, I unstuffed my sinking funds envelopes and my cash envelopes, everything but my groceries because I still needed my grocery money. But everything else I unstuffed, just meaning that whatever I had left in any of my envelopes, I took out. If you're not familiar with cash envelopes or sinking funds and don't understand what I'm talking about, <laughs> it's all a part of budgeting. It's all a part of cash budgeting. And I have several videos um, that show me doing my budget, that shows me um, stuff in my cash envelopes, stuff in my sinking funds, showing you what cash envelopes I have, showing you what sinking funds envelopes I have. For instance, my cash envelopes. So cash envelopes is kind of like your variable, variable expenses. I already have my fixed expenses. My fixed expenses, all of them are basically um, paid online except for my rent. Um, I pay my rent in cash. Um, so that goes in my um, in my budget to get the cash out from the bank that I need. But my cash envelopes, the ones that I currently have are groceries, um, giving, gas, and lottery. 
don't judge me because you got to be in it to win it. People always say they want to win the lottery, but don't never play. How are you going to win the lottery if you don't play? So, <laughs> and then my sinking funds envelopes, some of them are um, gifts because I save and budget for, for gifts, <clears throat> Christmas, um, household, you know, just things like that. Like I said, check out those videos on that and you'll see what I'm talking about with the cash envelopes and the sinking funds. That's all part of a cash budget. So I took all of that that I had remaining. I think I had about almost $500 remaining out of that. Put that towards student loans too. So for student loans last year, I was able to pay and this is not, you know, I'm talking about my snowball. Um, these lights be hot. Um, uh, my, my regular payment on student loans is $248 a month. And I was able to pay an extra 6000 and I think it was like $6,100 as my snowball towards student loans. Because like I said, with this 0% interest, take advantage because that is all going towards principal. And child, let me tell you, it feel, when you're paying your student loans, it feels like you're never making any progress because you're paying all interest. That interest goes up and up and up and up. They, it's a trap. I swear it's a trap. If, if you're young, <laughs> I'm telling you now, don't get student loans unless you absolutely necessarily need them and go ahead and start paying on them early. That was my problem not thinking that all this interest is still accumulating i was um getting um what they call them um oh gosh i can't even think of what they're called deferments and all the other kind of stuff hadn't paid on them in, in years not knowing that all along that the interest is accumulating so that's why i'm more in debt with student loan than what i should have been because i should have been paying them all along but i digress so <laughs> this year as part of my savings challenges i'm doing those two that i did and i am also adding this what i call the seven days a week challenge the seven days a week challenge is where you put money in an envelope each day or just save the money each day so monday is one dollar tuesday is two dollars wednesday is three dollars thursday is four dollars friday is five dollars Saturday is $6 and Sunday is $7, which totals $28 for the week. How I'm going to do that is, like I said, I do a paycheck budget. So I am going to uh, put in, what's that, uh, $56, $56 every paycheck. We'll go to the side. I'll probably create an envelope for that too. Yeah, I'll probably create a little cash envelope for that too to, to hold that and keep that money in there. So that's $56 every paycheck. At the end of the year, you should save about $1,456. So those one, it's hot. I got these lights on so y'all can see me and it is hot. <laughs> um, so those are the savings challenges that I'm doing. So what, uh, comment below what savings challenges are you doing? There are several savings challenges out there. Um, there are several, um, budgeting um challenges out there paycheck challenges um you can do monthly challenges weekly challenges they even have daily challenges out there um you know the dollar a day challenge um with some other ones the 52 week challenge now don't mistake the 52 week challenge with the 100 cash envelope challenge they are not the same um what's some other challenges that i hear out there um i think a hundred dollars a month challenge um the saving for your $1,000 emergency fund challenge. So that's a, it's several challenges out there. You can look on um, YouTube, you can Google it, whatever. If you wanna see the um, 100 cash envelope challenge and the $5 challenge and know how that works, check out my YouTube on that. My goal is to save 30,000. I know that's right. I know. Get them big goals out there. That's right. Speak it into existence. Set an action plan. Cause I'm gonna tell y'all about another goal I wanna hit later that's gonna be a huge goal for me. Um, so I'm going to move on. So speaking of student loans, let's get to debt goals. It's time to sit down and write out all your debts, whether it's credit card debt, um, your student loans, your mortgage, um, your car. Thank goodness I don't have a um, 
car loan. I'm going to ride my car to the wheels fall off. You heard me. <laughs> like last year, and I and I do have a um, sinking funds envelope for my car maintenance because I know it's an older car. It's a 2009 but it's one of those good classic cars where you don't have a lot of trouble on it. It's a Nissan. Um, but I know because it's an older car, I'm going to need maintenance. Not just regular oil changes, but I'm going to need maintenance, maintenance. And last year, my whole air conditioning system went out. So the guy said it was this, it was that, it was that, da, da, da. And I ended up having to pay $3,000. No, this was two years ago. I ended up having to pay $3,000 on car maintenance to get all that overhauled. And everybody kept saying, why don't you just buy a new car? Why don't you just get a new car? You can afford it. Da, 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 da. First of all, don't count my coins. <laughs> you don't know what I can afford and can't afford because I might need to use something else with that money. Okay. Second of all, $3,000 is less than having a car payment for five, six years. Even three years, even the first year. Let's um, say, for instance, if you had a, if your car payment was three hundred dollars, that's um thirty six hundred dollars you would be paying for the year. I paid three thousand dollars to get my car fixed, and I don't have any payments. Just saying, you don't pay thirty six hundred dollars on car payments that year. You're not done. So yeah, and you still have to get your regular maintenance. So yeah, I'm gonna ride it till the wheels fall off. Don't care. Well, my car still look good. I don't care. It's still nice. I need a new gas cap, but <laughs> but we ain't gonna talk about that right now. Um, but yeah, so just sit down and write down all your debts and figure out how you're going to get out of debt. Make a plan. Like I said, you gotta have a plan behind it. You have to have, to have an action plan behind your goals. If you say your goal is to pay off $10,000 in credit card debt this year. Okay, well, how are you gonna do it? Are you going to get a side hustle? You're going to start a new business? You're going to work some overtime? What are you going to do? Make the action plan. Every goal has to have an action plan behind it. Um, and then I do this. What I, I do the snowball effect with my student loans. I I guess it's really not a snowball because student loan is the only debt that I have. <laughs> Even though I have credit cards, um, because I've been working on building credit and getting up and up and up and up which has been really working is that I keep my balances under 10% and I pay the whole thing off. So I never have any credit card debt. I may have a lot of credit cards, <laughs> but I use them purposely, purposefully. However you want to say it. <laughs> I have a plan to use them. Um, you just have to be strategic with your credit cards. If you have credit card debt, Go ahead and work on a plan to get out of credit card debt and then start using them strategically to um, build your credit score if you need to get it higher. I need to get my credit score higher so I can get this house. And I was able to do that. I did that in less than a year. Um, and I have a video on, on that if you want to check that out. I have a video about how I raised my credit score over 100 points. Um, and doing it myself. I did it all by myself. It may have taken longer for me to do, but Mm, I'd rather try and do it myself because I have the patience. I have the knowledge. Um, all you have to do is Google is your friend. I'm trying to tell you. But I am in a couple of Facebook groups and they are my friends too. I'm in face Facebook groups that talk about debt, that talk about savings, that talk about um, building financial wealth, all that. You have to have, if you want to get to that place, you have to surround yourself with that atmosphere, with other people that has the same goals and dreams in mind. Um <clears throat> We're going to get to that too. I'm going to talk about that too. Um, but yeah, sit down and make your plan. Get out of debt. Get out of debt. <clears throat> I'm working on that student loan debt just as hard as I can. Um, let me look. Sorry, let me take a little sippy sip. I've been talking all day at work. Child, them folks drove me crazy at work today. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Sorry, Richard. No wine tonight. I didn't have my wine glass. Um, so yeah, no wine tonight, but I do have a little drinky drink though. I think I got I got Cavassier tonight. Y'all know I like the dark, so. <laughs> All right. Next. Um talk about paying off. Oh, what are your investing goals? Let me tell you. 
Y'all know I did a Money Monday last year about cryptocurrency. I gave y'all all the information about cryptocurrency and told y'all that I didn't um, invest in cryptocurrency because I didn't understand it. I didn't get it. I thought it was hard to understand. Blah, 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 blah. I did my regular investments, investments in my stocks and bonds and just stuck with that. But child, let me tell you, when they, now I'm not no financial expert, so don't take none of this I say to heart. <laughs> don't be saying, Tanya told me to, uh-uh, Tanya told you nothing. Anywho, so a um, couple of days ago, last week, Bitcoin was going crazy. So I got in, um, oh, I got this new thing called Clubhouse. I mean, it's not mine, but it's out there in the universe. <laughs> It's a new app, and what it is, it's like uh, it's like a chat room, and they have different rooms going on that talk about everything, everything you can think of. Somebody has a chat room going on about it, and they giving some good information. I mean, information that some people be asking you to pay them for. So, <clears throat> I um, I'm in my um, stocks and stilettos group on Facebook. I told you I'm, I'm in a lot of different groups to uh, try and learn and everything. So I'm in my stocks and stilettos group. And they was going crazy about Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. I'm like, maybe I should look into this a little bit more. Still don't understand it, but it's worth a shot if everybody keeps talking about it. So then I went to, I was listening to something on Clubhouse and I saw all these chat rooms going crazy talking about Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. I'm like, what is going on? So needless to say, I got me some of that. <laughs> don't, still don't understand it, but I understand them numbers. Like they say, women lie, men lie, numbers don't. I looked at those numbers, even though I still don't really understand cryptocurrency, even though I read the definition and all that kind of stuff, got me some Bitcoin. I'm not telling you to go out and get any Bitcoin. Don't say, I, I lost $1,000 in Bitcoin. Tanya, to mm -mm, Tanya ain't telling you nothing. I'm just saying. So um, as I did that, I was looking at how I wanted to invest this year. Yes, I have stocks. Um, yes, I have bonds, but I need, I know I need to get some EFTs. Um, and some other things but i also wanted to start um getting into these uh real estate groups where you can invest and they go out and buy the real estate or buy the development like i know this one i have to, I have to research which one is it? I, I forgot the name of it but they go out and they buy apartment buildings um high rises and things like that and you can invest your money and get like a dividend <clears throat> on your money and get gains or whatever when they sell it or whatever they do with it oh i'm sorry i thought that was a comment i was trying to read a comment or whatever they may do with it um so that's something i wanted to get more into with investing also with my real estate business um somebody told me how well they didn't tell me how they was just talking about like a self-directed ira where you can start putting in your um, real estate investment and build, building your portfolio like that. And you can put your real estate inside of your investment portfolio. So I plan to look into that this year as well. So that's basically it for investments. Um, let's see what time I'm working on. Oh, I'm doing good. I told y'all this year I want to try and keep these Money Mondays short. I don't want to keep going on for an hour, even though people start coming in in the middle of it and then start asking questions towards the end uh, and then getting it longer, longer. I don't mind answering questions. But because I'm trying to move these videos over to YouTube, I don't want them to be too long. So that way people won't say, oh, that's an hour. I don't know if I want to click on this. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so that's what I want to say on that. Um, hey, Wanda, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Um, let's see. Um, so another goal you may want to set for yourself is making more money this year. Um, you know, how much do you want to make this year? What's your, what's your, um, amount that you need to pay something off to pay your credit card off? If you only need, if you need $10,000 to pay your credit card off, um, are you going to do a side hustle to earn that 10,000 for the year? Are you going to, um, get a part-time job, work some extra hours at your regular job, work some overtime. Child, they just, oh, they just told us we had to start back our overtime this week. I'm like, Jesus, we just got a break. I think, um, when did we start working overtime? I don't even think it's been a whole month that we had started working overtime. And now this week, up, oh, 
child, it's done turned up and we got to work that overtime again. But you know what? I don't mind. I'm grateful and I'm thankful to have a job in these times. I'm thankful and grateful to have a job so I can get my house. Um, you know, I'm just grateful and thankful. So I'm not going to complain. I love it. I'm not going to complain. <laughs> um, so what is your plan for making more money this year? What is your goal? Do you want to surpass the $10,000 because you want to not only pay off your credit card bill, but you also maybe want to take vacation if things get back right. Speaking of vacation, child, I just saved up my little money because I want to go to Hawaii this year. I have saved up $11,000 just for this vacation. I have saved it for a couple of years. Still don't know if that's going to be quite enough, but we're going to make it enough. I'm trying to go to Hawaii for my 50th birthday. I'm turning 50 this year in June. So I'm hoping all the vaccines will be out. I'm hoping, <laughs> hoping stuff will be open. I'm hoping I can take my Hawaii trip. And I'm trying to do all of the things in Hawaii because I've never been to Hawaii. And that is my dream vacation for the United States. I want to go to Hawaii. I've always wanted to go to Hawaii. So I'm hoping and praying that I can go for my 50th birthday. So I got until June. So, hoping things will calm down by then I can take my little trip. Because, you know, that's a lot of hours on that plane. I'll probably break it up and fly to fly to L.A. or something like that and then fly to Hawaii. However it goes, child, I just want to go. I want to live my best 50th birthday life this year. I want to turn up like I did for my... So, I'm going on and on about my birthday. <laughs> I get excited about my birthday. I want to turn up like I did for my 40th. My 40th. My 40th. My 40th. I went all out. You got to celebrate i'm trying to tell you because a lot of people don't make it you can go through things where you don't know if you're gonna make it you know most of you guys know that i went through having cancer a couple of years ago and by the grace of god the surgery that i had removed the cancer and i'm still cancer free let me knock on some wood still cancer free but you just never know what's gonna happen you just never know i mean take 2020 Nobody knew we was going to be in the house all 2020. You just never know what's going to happen in this life. So you have to, like Martin said on his special, you got to ride this thing to the wheels fall off. You got to enjoy yourself. You got to celebrate. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to celebrate my 50th birthday. I don't know about y'all, but I'm trying to celebrate my 50th birthday. I'm trying to go over the top of my 40th. My 40th birthday, my 40th birthday, I had three parties. I had a party. Um, in the state where I'm, where I'm from. I had a party in the state where I was living at. And then I had a party at a friend's house. I also went to Vegas. I went to um, CWWE. <laughs> Don't judge me. Um, but I just lived my best 40th life when I turned 40. I was partying all month long, I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to do the same thing this year. So hopefully things will... Be okay while I can travel. But I got my coins ready. And then when I was talking about it to somebody, somebody was like, you owe all that student loan debt and you're going to take $11,000 and um, spend it on a vacation. You damn right. I worked hard for it. I'm still paying my student loans, but I work hard for my money and I'm going to enjoy it. I do not believe in living like a pauper and eating beans or rice. I mean, yeah, I'm probably can get out of debt faster. I can get out of that student loan debt faster, but I'll be miserable. Who wants to live a miserable life? I don't. Y'all can do it. I'm not going to do it. So I'm just saying. It ain't for me. <laughs> All right. So now get into my goals that I want to achieve for my side businesses and my side hustles. I want to make $100,000 this year. That's my goal. My goal is to make $100,000 this year on my businesses and side hustles, not my regular. Um, but my side hustles and my businesses that I want to take on all accumulated. I want to earn $100,000 this year so I can put that towards my student loan debt. So my plan is if I make $100,000, of course, I had to put some something aside for taxes. Of course, I had to pour back into my businesses. But I'm hoping after all of that, I still can come out with um, fifty or sixty thousand dollars, 
and all that will go towards my student loans. So I know y'all saying, well, damn, Tanya. <laughs> How much of a student loan do you have? You know, I've never, when I post, I posted something in my um, Dreamcatcher Live Rich group. I told y'all I'm in these Facebooks. I'm in these Facebook streets now. <laughs> and I posted it in the, um, uh, the budget, um, the budget mom group. That was the first time I ever posted and said out loud how much I actually owe in student loans. Are y'all ready for this? Are y'all ready for this? <laughs> it's a scary number. That's why I hadn't wanted to say it. So y'all, because I did not pay on those loans, kept getting the forbearance, kept getting deferred, kept doing this, kept going to school, kept taking classes, kept uh, da, da, da. even though I came out with two associate degrees, one bachelor's degree, three certifications, no, I'm sorry, four certifications. I think I was kind of using school to not pay the loans too, because you know, when you're in school, you don't have to pay your loans. So we're going to do this drum roll. $115,000. You heard it right. $115,000. It hurts just saying it out loud. <laughs> and that's after I put uh, over $6,000 six, six on it last year for 2019. I put over $6,000 on my student loans. So that's after that. That's the number. So yeah, so now you see why people are um, trying to come at me for having this $11,000 for my vacation instead of putting on my student loans. Let me tell you something. Those student loans will still be there. Hawaii won't. Like I said, you never know what may happen. You just don't know. So I'm going to give myself my own flowers <laughs> while I'm still here. I'm going to take my vacations while I'm still here because I work hard. Y'all know y'all be seeing me working. I, I not only work a full nine to five job, actually more than nine to five because I'm always working overtime, but I also work my side hustles and my businesses. And I work and work and work and work. So my motto is work hard, play hard, love hard, pray hard. Don't steal that and put on a t-shirt. Look, that's probably one of the business I'm getting ready to start trying to uh, get me a little Etsy shop and make some t-shirts and some mugs and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And also, um, I've been selling my budget things like my um, sinking funds envelopes that I made, my cash envelopes, my budget books. People have been buying budget books for me. Thank y'all so much for um, buying um buying what i make i'm going through craft withdrawals right now because y'all know i am a crafter can't craft right now because i'm staying in somebody's house while my house is getting built <laughs> what time okay we at 7 35 so i'm gonna go ahead and get on off this live but um thank y'all for joining me put down in the comments what goals you're trying to achieve whether it's savings um debt um, increasing your income, just whatever it is. And make sure when you have your goal, you come up with an action plan for it. It's always have to be an action plan behind your goal because that's how you're going to achieve your goal. So I hope everyone achieves their goals for 2021. Again, go ahead to my YouTube channel, subscribe, like, comment, share, whatever you want to do. <laughs> I would really appreciate it. So I will see y'all for next Monday, Monday. And just like last year, you can always DM me and let me know some topics that you want me to discuss on Money Mondays. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and see how I close this thing out. And I will talk to y'all next time.